What's going on guys? Vic to be back with the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, somebody sent me their real Captain America 4 player arcade control panel that was already modified with a Pandora's box. Customer wanted a MAME only base system. Now he's got a 3 terabyte PC based system, MAME arcade, anything that will play and work with the arcade sticks is on this also he's got n64 controllers wait till you see this one mario yeah <laughs> i love mario <laughs> check it out all right guys you know, joe if you're not following me on all the socials what are you waiting for there's a link tree down below click that link and then it shows you everything be sure to follow me at vic underscore vp You'll see everything. <laughs> Family fun, me doing the builds. Anytime I find new PC games, then I get it working with the arcade sticks. I post it there. Again, now I'm in the habit of Instagram stories is number one. Then it goes into the TikTok. So if you follow me on TikTok, you'll see actually full length. Even if you look very carefully, sometimes my YouTube shorts that I post, YouTube shorts are only one minute long. So my videos will cut out because they are longer than one minute, but it kind of just gives you an idea. So yes. Be sure to follow me on all the socials. What are you waiting for? Just, I don't understand. Just gotta click it. Click, click, click. <laughs> As I always say, enough of that social media plugin. Let's talk about this build specifically. This is awesome. There's a lot to discuss. Um, it's just also great. You can see, like I've always said in my past videos, you don't have to buy an arcade cabinet from me. If you already have a control panel, if you already have an arcade cabinet, there is ways to work it. But majority of the time, I do need the actual control panel uh, I'm gonna tell you the whole background the customer emailing me this is great this is via email uh, a lot of e emails back and forth it's great uh, you know he told me his initial ideas of what he wanted and then now it's there's an end result that's uh, it's it's very it's it's extra it's actually because of me um, I went I went a little overboard uh, <laughs> but what's great with this and, and again I'm gonna tell you the whole background story on how it went from a main only build this customer only wanted MAME. He's like, Vic, man, I gotta get Donkey Kong. I need my Centipede. I need my uh, WrestleFest. Basically, once I found the PC, I told him, hey, I got a good deal on a three terabyte PC. Are you down for more games? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. This is what's great. Again, I'm gonna give you the whole spiel. Basically, I added a lot of stuff. This is me personally. I took my time with it and I don't mind it. I'm just the type of person where I, I got a good deal. So I was like, I'm not gonna, you'll, you'll hear the whole spiel, but and the end of it, if it's too much for the customer, I could simply just team you in and just edit my screens and you'll just have main market. Now you're gonna see some surprises. You're gonna, your eyes might go, whoa, Aruga. Um, yes, this build, I am using a Dell Optiplex. Again, I'm gonna give you the whole background. You might be saying, Vic, Dell Optiplex. The way this project initially started, a Dell Optiplex, even without any graphics cards or anything like that, again, he just wanted main arcade. A Dell Optiplex is the best way to go, and it's easy. Not to mention the price on it. I don't have to pay for a brand new PC, and then that, I have to charge the customer for that. This kind of thing, it, it works great. I do get this request a lot. I have a lot of people that will message me and say, Hey, Vic, man, I just need a main, I just need an arcade-based image only. I don't do images, obviously. I kind of just take what you want. You tell me exactly what systems and games you want, and then I can tell you what you need. If this customer, let's just say, wanted to play... PS2, PS3, a Dell Optiflex wouldn't work. I would have to definitely get a newer PC to it. But again, the way this combo started was, hey Vic, I just need some main. I just want to play my arcade classics, nothing else. And like I said, I'll go into the whole spiel of it. We'll start first with the emails, the initial stuff. This did come from San Diego, so it will be shipped back out to him along with an extra box, which is the PC in it. The best way to start is let's talk about the initial email, the first response from the customer. First, the customer messaged me and said, hey Vic, I have this four player uh, Captain America cabinet. Um, it does have a Pandora's box, but I'm not really enjoying the Pandora's box. Apparently one big thing with the Pandora's box is that it wasn't saving the high scores. His one thing was like, Vic man, I just want MAME and I need it to save my high scores. Now, in reality, this combo really started with, hey Vic man, I may want a new control panel. Uh, he was possibly looking at maybe a six button layout for players three and four, an eight button layout for players one and two, 
we were going back, basically back and forth. If we, if I built him a new control panel, uh, basically in the end of it, he didn't really need a new control panel. Uh, there are a couple of games, granted, yes, that I put in, such as this does run Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, this does have Street Fighter 5 on it. Some of those games are eight buttons, even for example, uh, TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Yes, he has that. Vic, I think you main arcade only. No, that's like I said earlier. There's a lot going on <laughs> in this build. So uh, again, it originally started out with, hey Vic, I may want a whole new control panel. Uh, and then basically I was saying to him, hey, you know, I could, you know, you got to send me the dimensions of it. In the end, he basically said, Vic, man, take the control panel. Just give me a PC-based system and whatever you could do, it'll work out. Again, this is from a real Captain America and the Avengers um, Captain America the Avengers four player arcade cabinet. So again, it's you're kind of retrofitting stuff Meaning if I was gonna make a new control panel, he would need to basically really send me the base um, Not to mention again the base. I'll show you the, the other side of this. It has side walls so It's like, you know, if I was gonna make the panel longer now I got buttons that are outside. There's a lot going on again um, You know, it's very funny. I've been doing this for a very long time you know, people, I, if you really go back to my videos, I mean, when I really started, um, I was retrofitting cabinets. Tekken, I had a Tekken cabinet, I guarded it, I put, and now when I put a Pandora's box in it. Um, but damn, you'd be surprised at how much hate, and you ruined it, you ruined the piece of history, you fucked it up. I was like, alright, it, it was broken, <laughs> you know? Um, but yes, I've, I don't want to say I've learned, uh, really I learned how to build arcades from them, but uh, I learned basically... You know, I have customers that, you know, close to me in New York where it's like, hey, I have this old, somebody just messaged me, we did it live on the Three Amigos live stream on Joel Retro Lizard's uh, uh, stream uh, on his channel. Uh, I was showing off somebody wants a shooter cabinet that they had. The cabinet said Big Buck, but the game inside of it was the uh, a Thomas Wave or the Sammy uh, uh, trophy hunting. So I was, you know, hearing their input like, hey, you know, would you modify this? And most people say, yeah, modify it because it's only playing one game. And then you got another partial part of the group that's like, hey, don't touch the originals. Leave the class. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. But basically, if you have an old arcade cabinet like this and if it's dead, I would suggest doing something like this. In this customer situation, it wasn't dead. He did have a Pandora's box connected to this. Uh, I had a whole JAMA harness. It came with it. It was already kind of pre-wired, which I'll also talk about the wiring and kind of the button situation and the joystick layout on this. But uh, basically somebody already modified it and then I had to basically kind of rewire it and uh, set it up for amazingness. That's, that's really what it is. Now it was great when the customer sent me pictures like, oh wow, you already have a trackball on it. He had this already. This trackball was already here. I didn't modify this. He already had it. I don't know if he physically was the one that did the work. Uh, if he did, kudos to him. If he doesn't build arcade cabinets, pretty good job. I'll take you again on the underside here. Uh, it's definitely kind of hand cut. Uh, big thing like when it comes to the actual joystick, the bases, it does look like it was a hand cut thing, not CNC cut. Only reason I'm saying that is because not all the lines are perfectly straight. But listen, it in the end, it works out. He's had this definitely for a while. Uh, he loved the artwork on it. If I was going to make a new control panel, he definitely wanted the artwork on it. But I'll tell you a couple of the challenges that I had with this. Again, this is an original cabinet. Again, he did very good at whether he did it or somebody else did it. The trackball placement is great. It is in the center, but as he was telling me a game list, he was like, Vic, I want to be sure that these games work on this new system. He mentioned to me Pac-Man and he mentioned to me Donkey Kong. I said, oh, uh, I realize you like Donkey Kong and all that. He goes, yeah, man, I need my, I gotta beat the high score. I said, you do need a dedicated four-way to really enjoy those. This cabinet, this control panel, did not have a dedicated four-way originally. He does have industry Lorenzo's. These are all, or you wanna call it Zuzu Haps. He's got the Hap joysticks on it. Great joysticks, I love those. These joysticks, when it comes to like arcade, I love these, but he didn't have a dedicated four-way. So pretty sure, even if you're playing Pandora's Box, you trying to play Pac-Man on this joystick, it's going to be a bad time. So I did include, I put this in, I drilled a hole through the plexiglass, through the wood, and I did place this dedicated four-way. Now, I can see it already. People are like, what are you thinking? 
What did you do? What did you do? You put a trackball right in the way of the joystick, Vic. Are you fucking stupid? And then I say to yourself, hey, be sure you gotta remember, I'm Vic BP. <laughs> it does have the detachable joystick. What a beauty. What a beauty. Now, now you wanna do some golden tea flying? Now you can. Yes, it does have the detachable joystick, so no need to worry. As you can see, hyperspin is reacting, so I basically held left and right. Come on, come on, it's me. <laughs> now when it comes to dedicated four ways, and I did buy it, I always do get the zippy joysticks. The zippies are great. I love it because of the gate. This kind of protruding piece of plastic, it comes out, what's the word? It comes out more than like the sandwas that I have in this right here, so yes, I will be brutally honest and I'll navigate here because I do love my Capcom bowling. So we'll load that up while we talk. I did originally get a zippy joystick. I originally did put it here. And the big thing is that I did have like my neighbor and also my daughter was playing it. We were playing some bowling. My kiddo loves Capcom bowling. She just loves like, I'll set the ball up and then she just kind of throws it. So sure enough, my neighbor was around and he's like, oh, let me try. So he actually came over here and whammed right into the joystick and it like he hit it hard and then i was like oh shit i didn't even think of that i didn't realize it went quickly and i bought the detachable four-way joystick now again this detachable um it doesn't come with a four-way gate there is no gate on it it's just kind of a solid piece of plastic you can't even rotate uh whether you want an eight-way or four-way oh foul delayed game i mean um hold on let me try to get this <laughs> so it, it originally doesn't come with that. Luckily I have a bunch of Sanwa sticks here and I basically swap out the gate. And one, two, three, now he does have a dedicated four way. But again, just to kind of show it off, if, and as you can see, it's down. And yes, the, you could do it with the joystick. But now, see like, I now have to focus on pushing up, avoiding the joystick. And I was like, come on. I'm Vic VP. Basically, you could take, you got you to, you know, use your finger as well. Right there, you got that cylinder. It's just kind of like a lock, and it comes right off. Beautiful. I, I can't get enough of it. So as you can see, there's a little nub. This is the actual joystick here. There's a little nub in it. This is the one, not a downside. It's not awful. It's not bad. But the, you know, the control panel is not cut for this. Meaning usually, and I'll show you, he did it right with the joysticks. You know, it's three quarter inch wood. You do like to kind of at least take about a quarter of an inch of the wood out. This way it kind of, you know, fits better. So the big thing is, yes, I do have this zippy gate here. Uh, I, it did come with a bigger um, dust cover, just like the other um, joysticks, but you're gonna cover up the whole shield. So I let him, I gave him the, the smaller one. I'm gonna actually just remove, I'll remove the top. This way you can kind of see how it works. And I'm gonna remove the dust cover. So again, let me just show you how this works. Uh, again, it's awesome. I have this on my personal vertical cabinet. So big thing is that you drop it in, but it doesn't just drop in. You have to pull the cylinder up and then in, and now it won't go anywhere. So now the big thing, as you can see, this kind of like piston thing, it's right on the edge. So me, you know, I don't have fat fingers, but luckily I'm able to pull it up. Again, you have to kind of do it like a shot where uh, you basically you know, hold it like that and pull, drop, in. That's not going nowhere. That's what's great with this, right? Now that that's in though, just so you can see it, again, I'm there. If I add the, the dust cover now, and if I add the ball, again, as you saw in the beginning of the video, I'm able to do this one, two, three. You basically have to like lift the dust cover up and you do have a little bit of space. I mean, it's not a lot. Again, it depends on the customer. You could pull it out. So worst case scenario, you just remove the ball top and then the dust cover. I could, again, as you can see, I could do it with it all intact. But there you go. That is the removable dedicated four-way. Now for me, I give myself like a pat on the back on this. And I don't, I'm not saying anybody else, but I test and I play. So, you know, again, somebody that's trying to bang these things out quick, they're just going to put it and then call it a day. Imagine if I sent him the zippy. Not to mention the zippy, the zippy joystick, it's got, you know, the individual micro switches, whereas this joystick is more of a sand wall with the, it's basically a five pin uh, kind of connector. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is that I test. That is the best thing. I will play and I will make sure things work correctly. Also, 
delay of game. Also, the big thing with this was that when I did get it, I did open the trackball and I cleaned it. Be sure to clean your balls. I made a, I did a YouTube short on it. Basically, you have to go underneath the panel. You lift up the panel, you take out the four screws. You do have to do a couple of things. You have to do a lot of unscrewing. But basically, yes, I did open up the trackball and I cleaned the inside of it. You always want to do that. Uh, microfiber cloth, uh, in all honesty, for this situation, um, Rang Arpeg Electronics uh, suggested a little bit of oil for the bearings for it to roll and it rolls. So again, not only did I just get this control panel, I always do the work on it. I opened it up and made sure. This trackball is great. Um, definitely like, not, I don't want to say the word sensitive, you definitely have to aim, you know, correctly. So if you are going on a, you know, on a curve or on the side a little bit, it does react very well. This is the trackball. I don't know what company it is. I don't want to say it's a Game Room Solutions trackball. I don't really know the exact company. I use the u tracks because of my control panel depths. This one, the person had to basically, you know, take a router and route out the odd looking square to make it flush. So it works out great. In the beginning of the video, I didn't have the power on for the LED. I'm going to talk about that because that's a whole nother situation. But as you can see, the LED does work. This trackball now, it does have the connections for the mice or the mouse inputs. It does have the connectors for left mouse, middle mouse, right mouse. Now, a couple of minutes before when I was talking about it, there's a couple of downsides when you're using these type of control panels, such as I can't really add more buttons. Um, in this specific reasoning, let me bring you back. I should have said I can't add because I did add here the coin buttons and I did also add the USB, but here's what I'm trying to get at. If you take a look at the control panel, <laughs> if you take a look at the artwork on it, if I start adding buttons, um, Iron Man already here, he's already, is it Iron Man? I would assume that's Iron Man. Uh, he's already got a little taste of a button to the eye. Um, so what am I getting at? I originally had the mouse buttons connected to player one start, player two start, and then player three start. Um, basically in game, it started to cause chaos. Uh, again, I had player two as the right mouse click and it would right mouse click and I would lose focus. So I quickly removed it. This is what I'm getting at. Usually stuff like that. It's always great to have dedicated buttons. You should always have a dedicated button for left mouse, right mouse. Now, Vic, why did you do that? What I was intending is again, this customer, he's going to utilize that dedicated four way. Now, if he wants to play, for example, Galaga, Right now, Galaga is set with the fire button down here. So if he uses this joystick, and I'm gonna go into, you know, I'll go later on in this video on how you can edit the main inputs, it sucks. You know, if you start playing Galaga here and your fire button is even here, it's, it's weird. Now the only thing is that I, he could set it up to this, which is player two start. He could do that, but I don't know now if certain games, let's say he starts with player one, and if he presses this button, it might now add player two. Again, it works right now. I haven't tested all the main arcade games. It might do that on a couple of games. I'm pretty sure though, Galaga, if you start a one player game, even if you press player two start, I'm pretty sure it doesn't add player two. But again, I, I don't know. What am I getting at? Basically, with dedicated four ways, I do like to have three buttons next to it. And if I was gonna do that, Captain America would not be, you wouldn't see his face. Um, again, it's not to sound bad, it's just right now we are making this panel work. So it's basically stuff that I normally do with my cabinets, I have to modify a little bit. And that's A-OK. -okay. Luckily the customer is very cool. He does seem the type to tinker. Um, so if he does want to go into MAME and if he wants to edit some inputs, it's very simple. I'll do one or two games here just so you can see it. Um, but all in all, he has at least all the games that he wanted. It's actually funny, he sent me a whole game list. I have your whole game list, bud. We're gonna look at all that, but I mean, we this right here was supposed to be talking about the dedicated four-way. That dedicated four-way is a must. Once he mentioned Pac-Man, Mario Bros, and Donkey Kong, I was like, oh, you need you need a dedicated four-way. <laughs> now he also likes Centipede, also likes Millipede. What's great with MAME, it doesn't have to be my build, any MAME, especially for PC-based systems, it's just, it's just easier to navigate. Centipede, millipede, you could either put your, you could put your fire button anywhere. You want to do fire here, you want to do fire here, 
That's just what's great. That's why I love the PC-based systems. You cannot reassign in Pandora's box. I've tried. Um, Raspberry Pis, they're a thing of the past. Uh, I'll go into that little rant in a second, but all in all, that dedicated four-way, yes, I did add it. Yes, I did try to keep it centered. I'm going center with the trackball here, so it's right in the middle of the shield, so that worked out great. I was like, oh, awesome, I'll put it right through the shield. This way it looks like you're controlling the shield. And it just worked out. I basically had to work around the artwork. Now, while you're there, let's talk about the actual coin button. So, again, he does have four-player arcade games on this. I don't know if the Pandora box he had, I doubt it had four-player games. Um, I don't know because uh, I've had my fair share of Pandora boxes. I didn't know what I don't know I still don't know. I don't know what Pandora box he has uh, but If he had a trackball to it, uh, I Haven't really found or I, I shouldn't really say I haven't tried a Pandora box with the trackball. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if, if that was working anyway when it comes to the four-player arcade games though You do need the coin button. So he, again, he does have a full arcade cabinet. He has a dual coin slot. That's only two. If you play four-player games, I do have an idea that I, I didn't do it yet, but I will show you the idea, and I will do it, and I will give him the option for basically breakaways uh, if he doesn't like the idea. But basically, four-player games, you do have your coin buttons here. So coin for two, coin for four, coin for three, coin for one. And it works. And as you can see, I'm putting in coins. I have the volume low. It works. Later on, as we went through emails, he then told me about this mod. I'm going to show you the NBA Jam mod he told me about. And he also told me about a mod for an N64 game. That then translated to, hey, I got to put dual USBs in the front. This is what I just love. I love, I love this. Yes, it was supposed to be originally a main arcade build. And now it's got three terabytes in it. So... I'll tell you the whole reason on that, but all in all, looks great. We're talking about the control panel. Let me take you around the back. We'll finish up the control panel, and then we're going to focus more on the systems and stuff. Now, again, when I did get this panel, it already had, and I lowered the price for them because I didn't know that, it already had these SJJX encoder boards. Uh, so definitely, if it's something that I could use, I lower the price right away because you have some hardware in it. But you can see here, I had to rewire the entire panel including players three and four, the button numbers that they were set to. It was like button one was really set to button eight. Everything had to be rewired. I didn't want to clean up the wiring so you could see the zip tie job and all that. It's all here and it looks great. We do have the Zinmo here. This is players one and two. Basically with this here, I do have to extend wires. So I do have a bunch of soldered and nicely kind of um, heat shrinked tubing. And all in all, it's great. You could kind of see, I'm trying to tell you, trying to show you what a good like example is. I don't know if you could see, like for example, the control panel, uh, like the joystick, you see the joystick cut out here? It's not CNC cut, and it's not a bad thing. It's not, I'm not trying to degrade you, it's, it's great. It works out very well, you can kind of see it here, possibly, I'm hoping you could see it. Uh, but yes, that is where, for example, this right here, this is the dedicated four-way here, I can't take a router to this. I usually have my CNC. I'm never good with hand routing because it would look like that. Um, but, and also not to mention, it's very difficult. People really don't understand. It is difficult now to modify this, any type of control panel that already has artwork on it. And then not to mention this has plexiglass. Just to cut this right here, no joke, that took me about 30 to 45 minutes. And I do that because it's slow and steady wins the race. I can't just go and force and bang and I have a risk of breaking plexiglass. It was a whole thing. Again, I posted on my stories. I actually removed all the buttons and the joysticks. I cleaned the actual plexiglass. I took all the screws out because I did make that hole. Sure enough, all the wood debris went underneath the plexiglass. I'm not going to give you to you back like that. That's going to be awful. I took a, I, I disassembled everything. Cleaned it all up, that's when I cleaned up the trackball, and then put it all back together. That's just part of the job. I'm not complaining about it, it's just, that is stuff you have to consider. All in all, looks great, plays great. Again, these buttons right here were not here. Again, this is already, it, it's already in like black. It's like black millimeter. So again, just gotta protect the black. I put a bunch of painter's tape just to make sure that when I drill through, you got no issues on it. But all in all, solid stuff. Wires and all that, this will get cleaned up. This right here, he has a bolt here, and then he has two bolts right here. 
and this should go back to normal. You could see my routing job here. This is all like the USBs here. And then I do have the PC power supply here. The big challenge, this is a huge challenge. He does already have this. This is like an arcade, um, I don't know what kind of connector. It's like a Molex style connector. This connector here is going to his coin door. This took me no joke about two hours because he sent me pictures. I asked for specific pictures. Whoever wired up the Pandora box, it's um, uh, basically they merged the two coins to one. So I had to ask him for a lot of detailed pictures of his coin door and of this connector here. It's a big connector, but it only has four wires going into it. Basically, this connector does work. He's going to get it. He'll plug it in. It will give power to his LEDs in the coin door and it will work. The left coin slot is player one. So if he's playing, let's say for example, a four player game and he puts a coin in the left slot, it will activate only player one. If he does the right side, it will only activate player two. Again, Pandora boxes, that's just basically the person merged it to one coin. So both coin slots would insert a coin. Um, again, PC based systems are a little bit different. You could set it up that way. Um, but basically again, if I played uh, a four player game and I put a coin in, uh, it would activate players one and two, uh, once you drop the coin. So a lot going to it. The other big thing that was very, I've never seen it. Uh, he, this was connected to the Pandora box and this, he told me in his cabinet, the, to power the LED on the trackball and the coin door LEDs, the person put an actual PC power supply in the base. That's where he used the SATA or he could use the power here. I basically left this connection here for him. So he could use it, but he did tell me that when he does connect it, sometimes the LEDs go out. He has a loud hum coming from the power supply fan. Um, so that PC power supply might be going out. Basically, all in all, he does have this, but I also did give him a 12 volt plug. Again, nice, clean, it ain't gonna go nowhere. This right here is all together here. So he could either plug in from the PC power supply. If that power supply is crap, then he just has his standalone 12 volt plug. Um, definitely don't plug these in together. I'll let him know. I'm gonna send him his own separate tutorial video. But again, Little details that will work. Also keeping in mind the length, you know, it's not a deep cabinet, but he's got enough. Definitely he has to have, and I told him already, you do need outlets. Um, you know, whether you take a power supply and you make an outlet out of it, cause you have to power up the PC. I believe his current cabinet does have an LCD TV in it. So he already has plugs. He just now has to probably remove, if he's gonna remove that power, the PC power supply, he would just put this in, but all in all, solid. Now this was just one thing, a lot of people noticed it. I didn't notice it in the beginning, but a lot of people noticed, I'll take, I'll just take a close look at the control panel, but um, uh, joystick placement. <laughs> you can't do anything about it, I get, I'm not laughing. Uh, it's just so funny because somebody like messaged me and was like, damn Vic, what did you do to my boy Captain America? He's very happy over there. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> that already came out to me like that. Uh, the only thing I did notice, player one, uh, I already have the joysticks in, I'm gonna talk about the joysticks real quick, but player one, um, what's the wording? The shaft is very close, you know, you make a hole, this is kind of weird. Uh, the shaft is very close to like the edge on the, the right side, but it still makes a click. But it, it does touch the plexiglass. Again, I can't really do anything about that. I did try to move the joystick over a little bit, but the hole placement and the, 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 the actual screw placement, these, uh, you can't move it that much. But it does work. It's just somewhere I noticed that I was like, oh, this is very close to the left here. But all in all, it does work. Now, a little extra stuff for the customer. I went and I did get the four colored joysticks. He sent me black joysticks uh, and he will get those back. I just sent them, I was like, hey, you know, I, I'm the type like, you know, especially when it comes to like, I think it was like the Simpsons arcade, you know, they have the colors coordinated to actual players. So I did get a purple, a blue, a red. I was gonna do yellow, uh, but I had a red, so I gave him a red and then a white. So I said, I was like, hey, do you want me to switch with the joysticks? He goes, Vic, do whatever you want, bro. So I do have his original four 
blacks, and now he's got the four new joysticks, and I did put the new bases. So these are all like the new micro switches. Um, same thing now real quick for the coins. The coin buns, as you can see, match up with the color. Awesome. Worst case scenario, if he does not like that, I'm going to be sending him also four black buttons. Uh, he did originally want the black, but then I showed him a picture. He's like, oh, it's not too bad. So I'm going to give you all this, bud. You can make the choice. It's very easy, swappable stuff, worst case. But yes, I just want you to enjoy it. And this is my vision of the color joysticks, and I hope he likes it. And then the last thing is, um, again, when it comes to like these star buttons, depending on what company you get it from, you can see that the player one is already fading. Um, player two, I didn't touch too much. I basically, when I saw it, I saw this fading, I was just basically touching the edge. That's where the customer could experience the fade. But I have an extra player one. I will be putting that once this goes out and is shipped out. But all in all, awesome, awesome stuff. So a lot to talk about with the control panel. Yes, as you know, I do talk a lot. So the control panel basically set awesome stuff. Connections are good to go. Let's talk about the system now itself. I did give the customer a heads up and I said it in past videos. Whether you're using a hyperspin, launch box, big box, going to a PC based system, I consider it expert level. Luckily this customer experienced Pandora. Pandora is great. I've, I've sold many Pandora boxes, but some people want more or they want more features. Big thing on this customer's build, he was like, Vic, this must save high scores. It has to save high scores. And yes, it does save high scores. MAME is set to save all the high scores and such. So basically what I'm trying to get at is when you start going into more stuff, again, a PC-based system, uh, it is not as user-friendly as a Pandora's box. Now, again, some people have seen my videos and they go, oh, this is kind of a turnoff. Like I don't, this sounds like I need to know uh, algebra. To, you don't need to know that. It just, it does take time to learn. Uh, it's not a Pandora's box. He might be very used to powering on, getting into a game within like a minute or two. You could technically do that with this, but there's a couple of extra steps and such, especially when it comes to the loading. Uh, loading isn't bad. It's not like, oh, I gotta wait long. No, it's just, you gotta hold down the button and just wait for the screen to change. There's a lot going on. Then you also have the exit button. There's a lot to it. Just keep in mind, again, a PC-based system, I consider it, it is expert level. If you need something for like a five-year-old to just plug in and play, like an arcade one up, always go Pandora's box. But luckily this customer experienced Pandora's box. This is where I always say you need patience. And again, it's not a build, it's not my build, it's not a hyperspin thing. Even when it comes to launch box, big box, you it's the same experience. It's the same exact thing. Now I have the system off, I'll do a whole boot up and then a boot down thing. Basically right now, there's power to the PC, but it is off. I'm gonna utilize the power button here, one, two, three. We can also see how long it takes to boot. Uh, again, this is kind of now the part of the tutorial, but I'm also gonna talk about the whole, you know, changing from MAME only to everything else. So, uh, big thing is, this system's gonna boot up. When we were originally talking again, this was supposed to be a MAME only build. This customer wanted it where the PC turns on and he wants to go right into MAME. He wants it to load up and do its own thing. I normally do that, I used to do that, then I kind of turned it off because some people use it for more than just MAME arcades. They might want to go into play in some Steam or into some Fightcade. But right now we're gonna let the system do its thing. As you can see, we are booted, but after 30 seconds, it will automatically launch Hyperspin. I purposely have it set for 30 seconds. This way everything in the background kind of loads up and such. So again, going back to how it originally started, the customer wanted it to go right into main. And I have that, it does do that, but now that we added a bunch of systems, it doesn't go directly into MAME. The first menu option is MAME. And I said in my past videos, I have basically uh, several categories for MAME. If you know MAME arcades, there's original parent ROMs and then there's clones. So I have, for example, this one here says MAME ROMs. There's no clones in this. Then I do have all ROMs. I right now, before this is going out, this is upgraded to the MAME 2.58. I did see 2.59 came out. It's not a big deal. I didn't upgrade it because right now the games work on 2.58. So again, I have basically a cleaner list inside of my main ROMs. All ROMs is your entire, like no joke, you'll get at like 20,000 games. 
because that is including the clones to it. And then I have, for example, like a four player list. So if he wants to just play four players, he can go into here. So his initial request was, I wanted to go right into MAME. And then I said to him, I was like, oh, remember though, I have like a MAME list for just four players. I have a MAME only stuff like that. So essentially, yes, it goes into this. He would just long press button one, and then now he's into MAME the main ROM list. This right here is probably, I would say, a good like 3,000 to 4,000 games. Uh, again, you're not gonna find any duplicates here. Last night I spent the night removing all the Mahjong. <laughs> Mahjong games were just filling up the list. Obviously, as you can see, not every game has artwork. I do have MU Movies, I've had that for years. I ran it before this went out. And as you can see, just not all the, the, the artwork is there, but majority of it is. You can see that we have Captain America and the Avengers. Awesome. I've said in the past videos, you kind of take this as a tutorial part. This right here is a four player game. This really, this menu here, I have one kind of main emulator folder where this emulator folder, it's set to player one, two, three, four. My four player ROM list, it's player one, two, three, four. Now you might be saying to yourself, Vic, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you're saying. Basically, if I launch this one here, not all of them are going to launch exactly, meaning this right here may be running the two-player ROM or it may be running the four-player ROM. I believe on this one I do have the two-player ROM, and yes, I do. So again, this is perfect. This is a good scenario where I come here and I can launch. But now the customer could also say to himself, hey, Vic, man, where's my four-player Captain America? you would have to go into the four player set. So as you can see right now, player one and two is here, but I'm able to select the character. If I exit back, I'm gonna hold down the exit and I'm gonna go down now to the four player arcade classic list. This now has the four player ROMs. If I launch this one, gonna let that go. Now we will be in the four player. So if I insert coins for let's say player three, as you can see the coins are universal on this specific game. But if I'm here and I press start on player three, or it's really button one, as you can see, if I wanted to be this character, the, I don't know, arrow, whatever it is, I have to press arrow here. Again, you can see here, player two, Captain America. So again, you're gonna definitely see it when it comes to like NBA Jam. Uh, NBA Jam on the other list, it's one and two are on the same team, and then three and four is on the same team, but there is ways to do dip switches and just set it to two player mode and stuff, which I'm pretty sure I have it. I'll double check all those types of games. But as you can see, we are able to play it. I've also learned from many customers, bezels. I do have the bezels on these. If you don't like the bezel, it's a simple remove. That's what I love about PC-based systems. You run TeamViewer, I'll connect in, and it's no joke, a 30 second thing to remove the bezels. But then you could get a full screen stretch. But as you can see, yeah, we're gonna be playing some of this. Awesome. Now also it's cool with this control panel, the person has the joysticks actually like directional. So this joystick going up is this way. If I'm here, it's not a good time. You have to be on that angle. So I'm also remembering like, you know, the cabinet is right here. So as you can see though, awesome. I do have the volume low. I'll send it to him with the volume high. Uh, I don't know if he has an external you know, audio controller or whatever, but he does have headphone jack if he needs, and as you can see, we are good to go. One button exit for MAME Arcade, and we're back. Right now, just for, I don't know, bullshit, let's just see real quick, I'll launch, actually, we'll talk about the mod he told me about, while we find it. Now, also, I'm gonna go into, I'm going everywhere. He did send me a game list, and this is, this is what's pretty cool with this, he, I do have for him a favorites list. Inside of this main ROM, if he presses button three, which is the top row, third button, the blue, you will see this list here. If he presses it again, it will go into his favorite game list. If he doesn't want to search through all the games, I already did it for you, bud. I added all the games that you requested. So they're all here. All the Golden Tees, all the NBA Jams, all the Mortal Kombat's, and he did tell me about this one, which is NBA Jam Tournament Edition 2. This is basically really a clone ROM, but I modified it. And this right here is called, it's known as NBA Jam Tournament Edition Rewind. Um, basically this ROM hack, it's a hack, 
Uh, somebody went and added Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal. He's like, Vic, I must have this. I sat down and I figured out this is actually going to be perfect to show off launching it here. It's going to be weird, meaning player one and two is not in the correct spot. So right now, I can enter my coins, right? We're all good there. I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, we'll do player one. If I put it there, you can see there, player one is here, whereas player one really should be here. Again, it's the emulator that it is in. Right now, I'm just going to not, I'm not going to play a full game, but I'm actually, I'll, I'll, I'll go slow, but I do want to show off. He told me about this. Again, the Bulls has Jordan, and on the Magic, it does have Shaquille O'Neal. So again, he told me about this mod. He's like, Vic, I must have it, and you're good to go in this situation. But again, like I said now, player one and two here, that's on the left team, and now player three and four, you know, we're on the same team, but we're opposite each other. So that's not really how the arcade was. I'm gonna exit out, uh, and I'll also do real quick, I didn't do the four player list for him yet. You control it with player one. I'm gonna add now the NBA Jam. Uh, and honestly, this four player list though is very, uh, it's much easier to navigate, so you're not gonna be spending a long time. But I'm now going to launch the same ROM, but I'm in the four-player emulator. This is the big deal. I've learned this years ago because this is what matters. NBA Jam, it matters who's on your team because you could, you know, your teammates next to you. Now, if I basically add my coins, if I'm here, see that? Player one, this is really player three, is really player one. Player one is really player two. As you can see, it's just the importance on, I need more money. I got to put more coins in. Player, th player two is really player three. Player four is player four. <laughs> so again, it's just a little details like that, but as you can see, we're good to go. Any four player game, I always recommend you playing it here. And as you can see, again, it does have the, I have to be player, this player for this. Again, Chicago Bulls, that's the, uh, that's this controller here, you have to be like on a slant. So again, the Bulls has Jordan and the Magic has O'Neal. Awesome. Again, little details like that. It, I don't know who else does it. Uh, maybe, you, I don't know, but it does matter. Again, for Mame Arcade, it is a simple one button exit. We are inside of the four player list. He wanted, he's like, Vic, I gotta have my NBA Showtime. Again, my four player list is much compact. As you can see, like we're already in the T's, the V's, the A's. So you could make a favorites list if you like. We'll could do it real quick on this, along with any other list there i'm gonna go back to his nba jam so i could either hold down or i could hold left and right he wants his rewind again button three player one button three top row blue you'll get that if i press the add to favorites press it again now if i go to view my favorites though it's only that one game so it's pretty cool you're all set if you want to exit out you hold down the exit button and it brings you back to the main menu if you go back into the four player list it brings you and shows you all the games. He wanted his NFL blitzes and all that. It's all there. So again, his main stuff is awesome, but I also have it set up in categories. So if you wanted to play just shmups, only trackball games, racing games is iffy. You're using joysticks, uh, unless you had a steering wheel. Uh, but some games do utilize a joystick, so I didn't want to remove the list. As you can see, you also have like the Atomic Wave, the Model 2, the Naomi. I even have Techno Parrot on this and Tato Type X. Tato Type X for me is really PC or modern arcade titles that doesn't really use an emulator, they're kind of standalone. So it's pretty cool. Inside of Tato Type X, for example, I have this new like Spider-Man game. It's really like a Ticket Redemption game in it, but you do have a couple of things. I will talk about the WF Legends in a second. Uh, but for example, in this, uh, I do have Street Fighter V Type Arcade. So I'm gonna run this real quick. This again, not all my media is there. This right here is Street Fighter V. This is the arcade version. You have to put coins in, it's only a one player game. You do also have Street Fighter V regular PC, but this is like the arcade version of it. So it's pretty cool. If you leave this on, like sometimes I do, like if I have family over, I just leave this on, they're like, whoa, like what is this, Street Fighter V arcade? And yes, it is a Dell Optiplex, and yes, it does Play it. That, this is what's great with this. He has a lot of games. And again, there's a plus and minus to this. I do feel, honestly, he might be a little overwhelmed. He might be like, Vic, there's too many menus. Again, you just gotta get used to it and give it some time. But as you can see, 
putting my coins in, I could press start. I'll bump the volume a little bit. Again, I don't know if he has an external audio amp, but I'm right now playing Street Fighter V Type Arcade. This is not the PC game. This is like the arcade version of it. And it plays it very, it plays it well. It's honestly very good. Now, this obviously doesn't have 4K. His screen in his cabinet is 1080p, so that's all great. Um, doesn't have 4K. This Optiplex can't output 4K. This does have a 1650 in it. I'll go over the PC specs in a second, but real quick, let's just get a quick visual on this. Again, he does also have the regular Street Fighter V PC game, but sometimes these arcade versions, they play different. Bang! I do here. Again, this is the biggest thing you gotta understand. I'm playing this on a Dell Optiplex. A Dell Optiplex. I'm talking to somebody right now. They go, Vic Man, Pi 5 is coming out. What do you think? And I said, nobody fucking cares. Because <laughs> your Pi 5 is not going to play Street Fighter 5. Again, something that originally was supposed to be MAME only. My dude now has bangers. <laughs> I love it. As you can see, this is great. And I'm not playing no tricks. This is just amazing stuff. If I knew how to do a super on Street Fighter 5, that would be great. Awesome. Exit out, and then you are back into hyperspin. Beautiful, man. <laughs> now I'm going to talk more. I'm going to show off more of the systems and all that, but I do want to talk about the PC specs on this. Again, Dell Optiplex here, refurbished, and it's just the, the price point is great. We are right now, this right here, you're looking at an i7, 32 gigs of RAM running a 1650 GTX 1650. He's got one terabyte SSD for the boot and for these high intense graphic games such as Tekken 7, Street Fighter 5. And he also has a two terabyte standard spinning hard disk drive. Now again, here's how it worked. I knew I needed a PC. I told the guy, let me, you know, give me a day. Let me find some good deals on PCs. I stumbled upon this. This right here, I mean, even if I left it at one terabyte, awesome. But it came with an additional two terabytes. Now, me, I'm human. I'm the type of person where I would rather load this PC up with the games that could work with arcade sticks. That's another thing when I go into like the PC side of it, the PC game wise. You're looking at, I would say 90% of the games work with the arcade sticks. Vic, what's the other 10%? He does have N64. That doesn't work with the arcade sticks. You do need now your N64 controllers. Now again, going back to what I was saying, I got a great deal on this PC. I'm not an asshole. <laughs> I'm not gonna give you three terabytes and only, honestly with MAME, MAME Arcade is like no joke, like max. I would probably say with a lot of headroom, 180 gigs just for MAME Arcade. What am I gonna do with the other 700 gigs. That's, that's 980. That's 880. That's not a tar. What am I going to do with that? Leave it empty? No. I am a human. I am the type of person. I have this in my hands now. Let me fill this up. When you get it, if you say to me, Vic Man, listen, dude, this isn't what I wanted. This is this too much going. You got pinball like this. Okay. It's very easy. We could remove the systems from hyperspin. But you'll still have the games here because in case in the future if we wanted to add it it's here it's just so much easier to do it this way if you needed me to and i don't do it if you i get people that go can you file transfer game no it's a fucking headache i would rather have it so he right now has more games than he requested yes it may be overwhelming and i'm here to help you it's a-okay i'm just that person where i had three terabytes and i messaged him i said hey dude i got a great deal on three terabytes should I pull the trigger? You want more games to it? And he's like, yeah, Vic, it's a no brainer. Let's do it. Again, this is what's awesome. It originally was supposed to be just a main arcade build, but I got a PC that has three terabytes. Why not fill it up? Why not? Why not? Now, big thing is for me, it's probably for the future builds. Um, I have PC arcade and multiplayer games. My personal list on all the other builds I've done, which is normally ultimate arcades. This list has games that work with the arcade sticks, and or needs Xbox controllers because they are multiplayer. 
I sat down, you're talking, I would probably say about, maybe I would say about 180 games. I sat down and I launched every 180 games I had and I only put in the ones that either work with a trackball or they work with the arcade sticks. You're not gonna find God of War on this. Um, again, all the games that are here, I have tested, sat down, played it with the arcade sticks. Now granted, some of the games such as this here, Nickelodeon's All-Star Brawl, players three and four need like eight buttons. It works though, you know, you could, it's basically punches one and grab is two. Like, okay, that's cool. You can at least still play it. But as you can see, he now also has PC games. <laughs> this is what's awesome. I do want to launch, um, I'm trying to think what I recently did. Um, he likes Centipede. Why not play some Centipede Recharge? I do believe it works with the trackball as well, if I remember. We're going to launch it now. Big thing again, it's long press on button one. Let the system do its thing. You might be saying like, Vic, what happened? What, just let it, just hands up and just let it do its thing. That's where honestly the PC based systems, you get little kids that are like wailing on the joysticks, like what's happening? You just gotta let it do its thing. Now again, I believe this game here, it is, it uses, it's, I mean it's Centipede, right? It should use a trackball, but it all depends on how they have it. Either start is an enter key or button one. That's kind of like where you just gotta kind of figure it out. But let's just see real quick how this works. Look at that. So button one here and I'm using the trackball. If I was smart enough, yes, I am smart. I also have here player two button one for fire. Look at that trackball. We are right now playing Centipede Recharged. Recharged. This is like a PC game. I don't know how recent it came out. I've had this for a while. Awesome, beautiful stuff. Now the big thing though, this is a PC game. So kind of exiting, you might have to do a couple of things that you can see I'm holding down the exit, which is really escape. And I have that set to a hold. You have to hold that for about two seconds for it to react. Only because sometimes you, you might be going for player one start and you accidentally hit exit, especially when it comes to like arcade. So if I quit, Vic, I didn't quit yet. What's going on? How do I, you kind of have to navigate the PC game menu and you will eventually find your quit. Boom. Now we are back. It works. <laughs> I love it. I love every bit of it. Again, he's got bro force. He's got his fighters. You got Street Fighter V. You got look, Tekken 7. Again, I launched these. I played these games. I launched them. If it was choppy, I wouldn't have put it. But this right here, he's got it all. This is a new one, Pocket Bravery. Again, it's beautiful. The one big thing probably he's going to be very happy and excited for is I do have TMNT, Shredder's Revenge. So he does have that. And he's got four players. He will be able to play TMNT for players. Now also this one here is the newest update with the, I don't know what, the Bioshock or whatever it is. You have to actually complete the game. Again, long press button one, that's my enter. Hold it for like two seconds, three seconds, and you're good. Vic, what happened? What's going on? Just let it do its thing. That's all you gotta do is just let it do its thing. Don't go crazy. Vic, what is this now? Just let it do its thing. I'm telling you. When I go to customers' houses and I give them PC builds, I'm like, I tell the kids like, put your hands up. <laughs> Stick them up, put your hands up, and just let it do its thing. Don't don't panic. Your system is booting up and loading. Now TMNT, for example, as you can see, it does need X360 CE, the new version. That new version needs to launch before the game, and it does its thing. As you can see, though, we're up. Honestly, that game would boot faster, but because of this whole X360 CE thing, we're good to go. TMNT is another game that really you need six buttons for, but I'm able to play it. It works. Let's go into some arcade action real quick. Let's just show you off that four players does work. So I have to hold start to skip. Again, this acts like an actual Xbox controller. So it's A, B, X, Y, L, and R. So I got player one. I'll bring in player two. I'll bring in player three. I'll bring in player four. We are playing four player TMNT on, on an old school Captain America four player control panel. Look, he's even got the new characters and all that. It's a thing of beauty. I'm gonna slide in real quick because I had a brain fart while I was entirely filming. Uh, it's about this AHK file that I have. Some PC games need this X360 CE program. I kind of had a brain fart. If you hold down exit, it will actually escape and then it should also close the game. I, I just remembered that. So yes, I already have the AHK file set up and ready to go. 
basically exit is escape, hold it down, and it will drop. Whatever you see when I'm talking about TMNT and I was talking about Horizon, um, yes, that was a brain fart moment. Let's go back to scheduled programming. <laughs> I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I have this, like this specific game here, and there's a couple, there's a very small handful, maybe five or six other games, where it needs to launch that X360 program. As far as now exiting, I have to work on an AHK file for this program to exit if the game ever like closes. So right now if I exit this, it's gonna exit the game, but I still have the controller up. I may have to hold exit, which is escape. It's set to escape and it will change, like uh, it will exit that program. I have to work on an AHK that if the game exits, it should also exit that program. Again, it's stuff that I'm working on and I can easily team viewer in. But right now, as you can see, I do regain focus. Worst case, if you don't, you just grab your keyboard and mouse. You can either press escape, windows key. I always like to have these real keyboard and mice. I was gonna get like a gamepad style where it's like, you know, handheld. It's just sometimes like it gets annoying. So I'd rather give you that. But again, a lot of PC games, Xeno Crisis, beautiful twin stick shooter. It's awesome. Now again, not all the games utilize that X360 program. Worst case, if it freezes up, just grab your keyboard, keep pressing escape, exit out, and then relaunch. Again, I'm working on a AHK file. Shouldn't take that long. I would rather send this out. I could always email him and again, the beauty of this is that I could team viewer in. I could be home and I could control your PC from home. It is awesome, but I do have there the hyperspin shortcut right underneath the now loading. I made his own custom kind of backdrop. Vic, double dragon, customer wanted it. I actually have a Captain America as well as a backup if he wants to switch it. And it's cool, little details, little details. You can even see if you look carefully, the loading screen is a Captain America loading screen that I made. Uh, again, other games, if I go into Naomi, for example, uh, look, you know, like Sega Tetris. This now, in all honesty, some of the games are like driving games. I left it in there, but majority of them are like fighters. Uh, again, I don't have all the media because honestly, the media, especially video files, adds up, or there's just no media out there. But like, you got like Virtual Striker. Uh, again, you got even this one here, the WF Royal Rumble game. Again, it will launch and it does work with the arcade sticks. Again, four player, this is actually a four player game, this Royal Rumble game. As you can see, I held down one and did its thing. Vic, there was no loading screen. Not all of them have a loading screen, only because sometimes it loses focus. I've sat down and I've tested, so that's just the main thing you wanna get out of this. But as you can see, we are all right now loading up a Naomi game, WWF Royal Rumble. I assume he's a wrestling fan because of the N64 mod game that he wanted me to do. And we're good. If I wanted to exit, I hold down exit. As you can see, it's a two second hold and we're back. He's even got pinball on this. I even do have ice cold beer. This is a really cool game. It's, you actually use the twin sticks. There's only two games out of it. If I launch ice cold beer, it's very cool. It's a vertical game, really. There's your custom now loading screen and we're cool. I'm gonna enter some coins. I'll press start. And this is always fun. A lot of the times when I have parties, this is a cool game. You need your twin six. Basically, you gotta get the marble up into the hole. That's what she said. And it is a timed game. So, awesome, cool. If I hold down exit in this, Vic, it didn't exit. Hold it down one more time, and then you're good. Basically, every game is different. Now, pinball is pinball, pinball is there. I got FX2, FX3. Basically, the buttons, the controls, that's all fine and dandy. Now we're talking about the consoles. Now, if you know me, and I'm pretty sure you do, consoles should be played on a controller. Uh, but sometimes consoles you could play on arcade sticks. Is it enjoyable? It might be to some people just to relive some classics, but I do have the old school retro. You got NES, SNES, the Game Boys are there, Virtual Boy. I even have the DS there because it only needs six buttons. Does this have PSP? No, because PSP is more buttons and honestly, you wanna play with that with a controller. Again, this is what's cool. Let's just say this customer gets his build and one month, one week, one day later, he goes, you know what, Vic man? I wanna get a controller. Okay, I'll team you in. Yes, I have to adjust the controls. It's not awful, it is work. Don't get that wrong. It is work. I can always teach you how to do it. You have to go into the emulator. But right now, all of these systems here, yes, they are consoles, but all of them will work with the arcade sticks. So it's pretty cool. My Neo Geo is really arcade, but only Neo Geo. But again, you got Sega Genesis, you got the NES, the S you got the Game Boys. I mean, 
Again, I had three terabytes. Why not fill it up? Look, you wanna play some Flintstones? Cool. Long press button one. Again, as you can see, two to three second long press, it will do its thing. Yes, it's stretched. Do you want it smaller? That's fine. But again, this now is acting like a regular Game Boy. So you might have to just get used to it. This is the Game Boy Advance. So it should be like A and B and then L and R. But as you can see, I'm able to play it. Yes, it might take you a quick second to know what button is what, but hey, look at this. I have a friend from Whoa, who is that? Again, just trying to figure it out. I don't think there's an attack button on this. I think I just avoid it. Whee! But again, we are playing right now Game Boy. Do I like playing with the arcade sticks? No, but I had three terabytes to fill up. Why not fill it up? Awesome, I love it. Long press the exit, and then you're back. It's, again, I'm not saying it's flawless. Again, depending on what game you play, such as the PC game and stuff, you might have that little hiccup, but until I get an AHK down, you're good to go. I even put like the magazines in it. Why not? You're talking like a 500 megabyte file. Again, I don't even know the game count. I'll do a total game count later on, but all in all, awesome. Let's talk about N64. Now, this is cool. N64, this customer only wanted one game. Once I showed him I got NBA Jam down, he's like, Vic, and I told him I'm gonna put N64. He's, and I, I even asked him what, co what controllers does he want. Controllers are a big thing. I personally love these. I've never had these. This is a simple two-pack N64 controller. The customer found them. Awesome, it is wired and it's A-OK -okay because we do have the USB ports right in the front. So it could be wired. There's no need to go into the cabinet. Flawless as always. I grew up on the N64. I grew up playing it like this. This is how I played N64. He did find a wireless controller. I don't know what company it was, but basically the analog stick was over here. It was like analog and D-pad. And I don't, uh, this is me, 33 years old. I grew up on the N64. I, I need this with the Z, the Z trigger here. Anyway, he wanted only one game. This game was a modified um, No Mercy game, WF No Mercy. Um, I've, I got it working, so I'd rather go to it because I'm drawing a blank on the name right now. It's a very long name. I went to V by X and I could just tap left and right. I'll actually go to X and I'll go up. It's a modified version of No Mercy, but this one is called uh, WF Legends Challenge. So now the big thing is this. Before I launch this game, I'm gonna want to plug in my N64 controller. Just like how I have Project Canada, you always wanna plug these in beforehand. So now again, this kind of USB port in the front, if it's going the wrong way, be sure you're in the right way, that's what she said. I'm gonna long press, I still utilize the arcade sticks to control. But now this controller is plugged in before the emulator launches, I will get recognition on the N64 controller. It's cool, it's kind of like the, uh, what do you wanna call it, like the Hall of Famers. Uh, basically somebody took No Mercy and modified it. Right now this is, Totally different than how my other N64 games launch. But as you can see, I can press start. Gotta press start one more time. And I am in, I am playing it. I did let the customer know it's not a computer thing. It's basically like if you exit mid game, you might get like an error message. Uh, but all in all, it does work. So again, if I go to exhibition and it does have music, whoever did this mod, it's got like commentary from like, I think it's like Vince McMahon or somebody else, but you could choose title fights. Again, awesome, but the big thing is that it is working with the N64 controller. So again, this is like No Mercy modded. It is, it's beautiful. It looks great. Now, if I went into a match and I played it, and then if I exited it, I might get a red pop-up. I can't really do anything about that. You just grab your mouse, exit the pop-up, and then you're back. But with this controller still in, I still have control with the arcade six. There it is actually, there you go. So I can't do anything right now. I have to grab my mouse. Again, it's not a computer issue. It seems like it is a common issue with this kind of ROM hack. And I just gotta press okay. Once I press okay, I regain focus and I do have control of my controls. So now again, I control the system with the arcade sticks, but I play N64. The big thing though is that if I go into another emulator, you wanna make sure this controller is disconnected. It's funny, I told him, hey, I got your ROM hack working. So he goes, oh cool, Vic, if I wanted to add more N64 games, I could do that. I was like, don't worry about it, dude, I got you covered. You have the entire library. <laughs> the big thing is like, you know, I was, oh, it's just coincidental that I landed on Tony Hawk. But playing Tony Hawk growing up, you needed this, you need this whole controller layout. He does have it, again, long press on that, again, 
controller is connected before the emulator. That's a big thing. So now as you can see how my N64 normally loads up, you didn't get like that screen and the loading and all that, and we're good to go. So it's just that one ROM hack, it needs a special Project 64. But all in all, long press the exit, and we are back into Hyperspin. Again, I make it look easy. I make it look flawless, but I know for a fact somebody that's new to this might be a little confusing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my own separate tutorial for the customer, but all in all, it is solid. I feel like I went through everything I need. Again, the big thing is that if I'm gonna launch, let's say, for example, NES, you're gonna wanna make sure this controller is disconnected. And yes, he does have two players. I like this controller. A two pack was like 26 bucks. Whereas that control that he found with that analog, and I think it was wireless, I think it was like 70 bucks for one controller. This right here, it's a thing of beauty. I, 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 he said to me, he's like, Vic, what do you think about these? I said, I grew up on the N64. This has the weight to it. This is just what it is. I don't know if you could add an expansion pack. I doubt it. There's no actual connections here. No, it's just for show. <laughs> but awesome, awesome, awesome. The only last thing probably, I do have Fightcade on this. Fightcade you could launch outside of Hyperspin or you could launch inside of Hyperspin. He'll have to make his own account. If you don't know what Fightcade is, basically it is a server-based thing where you could play Street Fighter against other real people. They don't have to be next to you and stuff. I'm logged in on my account. Um, and again, as you can see, I am logged in inside of Hyperspin. So Hyperspin is in the background. Uh, shout out to B Kong with his JSON file. I'm already logged into Street Fighter, but I could leave the menu there. Uh, I could search for a game. If I wanted to play some Street Fighter 2 champion, I click join. It will give you this JSON file. It'll download the actual ROM for it. And then there's your whole list. He will have to log in on his own and make a new account, but what am I missing? <laughs> I just exited Fightcade and now I am back into Hyperspin. Man, uh, again, this does have Techno Parrot, aiming for all the arcade stick style games. Virtua Tennis 4 is great because that is a four player game. You might see like I have Tokyo Cop, for example. That's a, dra that's a driving game, Vic, what? Some games, honestly, depending on what it is, not all of them, some games will translate well on the arcade sticks. Uh, it's actually funny that I mentioned that because real quick, I'm gonna go into a new game that I just discovered, started playing even on my system and on my Steam Deck. I do have here, I'm gonna hold down so you can letter skip. And again, I'll do a whole tutorial separate for the customer so you can see it. Uh, this right here, Horizon Chase 2. Um, it is a PC game, but it actually plays well with arcade sticks. We'll load it up, why not? Try not to cut too much. I believe this game does utilize that new X360 CE, so there you go. So most likely if I exit this, I'm gonna have this little kind of hiccup until I fix my AHK. But this is one game, brand new, looks gorgeous. It's a gorgeous looking game and it works with the arcade sticks. It translates pretty well. So again, just depending on how the game is, you might have to wait until you get past this. Awesome. Again, not trying to cut. I know it's already a long video. It's a big VP video. Come on. So again, utilizing the arcade sticks. The, I don't normally like driving games on arcade sticks, but this plays well. Uh, again, you have to treat this like an Xbox controller. So it's A and B and X and Y or Y and X, whatever it is. Whatever you look at an Xbox controller, that's what it translates to. So this is pretty cool. I believe it's just A and basically it's assisted steering. So I'm gonna blast off here. And again, translates very well. Look at the graphics. Let me press start. Let's bump up the volume. I know that there's some music to it. But here we go. Mm, you do hear the music, but I doubt I'll get hit with copyright. But just to show you, again, a game like this, it translates well. So it's kind of like assisted steering. Look at this. Gotta get these coins, pass this guy up. There's also a NOS, like a boost. So there's my boost. It looks like OutRun. I said it to the group. I was like, this is like OutRun. It looks gorgeous. And you're playing it on an old school Captain America four player arcade cabinet. There's, there's nothing better than that. There's, oh shit. <laughs> but yes, as you can see again, it is assisted steering. There's also a setting for it. It's just bad driving example. Hit the NOS. Two laps left. Oh, it looks, it looks, it looks awesome. 
There's nothing you can do. So a quick cut, I just made that quick cut in the beginning of this whole X36 thing. I already, I remember I made the, the AHK file for it. So again, usually PC games, like you have to exit them. Uh, so most likely hold down exit. You have to actually physically go down and then exit. But the games that have X360C and it's not a lot, it's probably like four or five of them. And as you can see, I was like, oh, I remember I have an AHK I already made for it. But all in all, amazing, solid system. Vic, I'm done playing. What do I do? You hit your power button in the back right here and the system will shut down. Awesome. Uh, I have the dollar plex here. I didn't even show it off. Uh, I'll probably, you know, cut in between. But all in all, amazing, amazing stuff. I hope the customer enjoys his build. Again, went from MAME only to three terabytes of... And well, right on cue, camera overheated and died. <laughs> it's usually a sign to myself that, okay, Vic, end it, you spoke too much. But I just like talking. Uh, I appreciate whoever continues and watches the full length videos. Uh, somebody told me, like, I, I listen to you in the car. I'm like, oh, cool, like, as on the drive home. So I hope it's great. Uh, <laughs> I always laugh. I was like, ah, I'm talking. I just see the camera go bring and then zoom, like, close. I'm like, oh, crap. But yes, all in all, amazing stuff. Originally a MAME only build turning to three terabytes of insanity. Uh, he even does honestly have a little bit of extra space still available. Probably say a good, maybe. 50 to 60 gigs open. So if you ever wanted to get new games, you could hit me up. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, you will see, uh, I'm gonna, I do like to post it. Um, I'm gonna make a tutorial video for this customer. This way while it's in transit, he could watch and see how to set it up. Uh, I will make that public uh, just for future customers and, and all that. But all in all, there you guys have it. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades, I am as excited as Captain America. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your beast of a system.